uh, Fares is here. How you doing, mate? How about um, how? <clears throat> Sorry, one second. Hey, everyone. How y'all doing? You're very, very good. What are you here to speak about, my bro? Well, again, the manager talks. Uh, it's funny. We're, uh, for a club that's in eighth place in the league, we're the biggest soccer point in the world, which is just shows how big we are as a club. So uh, that's good to know. Good to confirm that. I can't disagree with a lot of what you're saying here. Um, one thing I want to add, though, is concerns with with Ten Hag and the manager position here. I think if the, if he wasn't willing to work under Ineos's new conditions, like the new management structure, wouldn't he be fired by now? Wouldn't they uh, confirm his his, uh, his, like, uh, his dismissal at this point if he wasn't willing to work under the, the new structure? The fact that he hasn't been dismissed yet and he's, he still could be our manager tells me that he's willing to, you know what? I, we all know when he first came to the club, he had a lot of power and, you know, the, the, the transfers and such and such. I think right now we can see, I think he's willing to work under the new conditions. Number two, with Tuchel, last year with Bayern Munich, we all saw how he was flirting with the club. He was saying, you know what? Um, I want to go back to England. I have unfinished business. Suddenly today we're hearing, guess what? I don't want to. Do, I I want to take time off. I don't want to work anymore. I want to, take, and so forth. Mm. Doesn't that mean we said no to him? We don't want you. And he's trying to flip it around, maybe. Uh, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just out. I'm not saying it is. I'm just throwing it out there. Possibly. I did. I, mm -hmm. Again, Cam, you said earlier. It's all tea leaves at this point. We don't, we don't know what's going on. We're just getting mm -hmm. at this point. And the third thing I'm going to say is, it looks like the club isn't leaking really anything, which is very good. All these leaks looks like come from the Tuchel side, which tells me we're not leaking anything. And I love that, by the way. I love that fact we're not leaking anything. So there's a few extra points to add what you're saying right now. I've always been Tin Hag agnostic, like in the middle. I don't care if he left or stay. At this point, I'm trending more towards I want to stay at this point. Because I feel he's one. I, I would prefer he stay. Considering the manager in the market right now, considering the fact I believe he's willing to work under the new structure, and considering he's going to work under an, a football structure, not a banker structure, I think it, we will have a better season next year with Ten Hag, I think. So I don't mind keeping at this point. That's just my I'm going to ask that question to the both of you. I'll write the cam first. Do you feel out of all the candidates available right now, including Ten Hag, Ten Hag is the best fit? Um, <laughs> uh, it's such a big guy. I get this is like this is one of those questions where everybody knives comes out. Um, <laughs> if we're not planning to bring back Sancho, then yes, <laughs> Play, like well, well, I we're not. I think um, we're not. I read that. No, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. I read that. So if we're not, yeah, the reports today are that it, yeah. it doesn't even matter what he does. Yeah. He ain't coming back. So if we're so not planning yeah. to do that, then when I look at the list and you tell me. And this is where people get it messed up when I make the argument just because I'm playing devil's advocate for like why I wouldn't be mad about Southgate. I don't want him. I'd much rather Ten Hag as a manager. I'm sorry. Like, I'd much rather be like, screw it. We gave him a three year contract, see it out. Like, that's kind of the thing that I always find interesting in English football is like, that you give him these contracts, just see it out. Like, whatever. That was the point. Like, he had, he won something in each year, see it out. I don't, I don't know the whole deserve thing. I get it. He plays pretty football, all that. Give him a chance, yada, yada. I'm not like, sold on a guy who's never really won anything um and has been in the prem and i get it he has had worse teams and all that stuff but like i'm not i can't turn around and say he's my first choice like i'd almost look at potch before yeah. him personally but interestingly enough right before terry i just read this so time sports which is actually like you know they're acting it's the times <laughs> um it is under this is a headline it just 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 got posted um at 115 so while we were talking uh, while you're talking, it is understood that Tuchel left the meeting with the sense that he was not going to be the Manchester United Manchester United choice should they dismiss Ten Hag and has now elected to take a break from management. So that is a very different story than what we were reading from he. So I think it was kind of both pieces. I think we gave him an opportunity to sell us. He came in, said his piece, and we were like, nah, we're going to keep we're going to keep interviewing. But anyway, yeah, to answer your question straight up, I think Eric Ten Hag is the best available out of all the people that were. Like, as much as that sucks, I think he is. But I don't want to keep him, which is weird. It's like, I'm in this weird, we're all in this weird spot. Like, we don't, like, you don't want to keep him because we saw how it didn't work. But at the same time, you're like, are we about to bring in somebody who, for three years, it's not going to work? Like, do we just wait another year and see what happens? Mm -hmm. So, I also add to, add to that. Do you think it's a good idea for him to go to the scene if he were to stay? Or wasn't you left on his contract? Would that be a good idea? Yes. You... Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm so I'm, against I'm... So This is where KJ and I get into a big battle. He's like, he thinks it makes no sense to have a manager staying with no security and not giving him an extra extended contract. So there's like, uh, like faith. I disagree. It's like, no, dude, you've been here for two years. You got one year left. 
this is it. This is your try. This is it. You, if you, if you turn it around, because listen, first year league cup, second year FA cup, if he stayed and let's say next year, he finishes third, we're solid. We look better. We don't win anything even, but we're solid in the champions league. We actually look like, like we're 10 points off of top or whatever. You then go, okay, we're seeing it right. Because you've won. And then now you've changed your style of play and now you've done the things you need to do. So that's the only way I would, I would never give him a new contract. Not before, not before next year. No chance. I would more with the players, to be honest. Yeah, do, do you know what? I, the one thing I would say is this. My, it's really funny because pe- there's still people that support Ten Hag and they've got every right to do that, but they completely misinterpret what I've said this whole time because the, the cognitive dissonance kicks in. The biggest reason I've said to remove Ten Hag is but I believe it's the quickest way for us to complete a rebuild is a fresh start the only thing you can't do instantly is the players and if you could and if it was standard practice i'd get rid of 95 percent of them as well however giving ten Hag another year and not rid of his contract it shouldn't make any difference if you're saying to the players and everyone that's involved that the head coach is the head coach they will come and they will go and the club plan is what we're here for that it, it almost the manager becomes far less important. The head coach becomes far less important because they're not the chief operator at the club. And seen a lot of Man United fans say, "How can we attract players?" And I get that having a superstar manager helps you attract players, but I don't think Man United have any additional pull, whether it's Thomas Tuchel or the Zerbi. I still think it's about the same. I, I, they're not none of the managers we're linked to are Peps or Klopp or Ancelotti's. They're not superstar managers, so. And we're Man United. So I, I'm not sitting there and, uh, and overly concerned about that. And if we decide to stick with Ten Hag, I've said all along, all along, I have said I will give it the same objective time and respect and support that I would if it was Deserby or if it was Southgate. So I'm not here like if we keep Ten Hag, the club's finished, we're not serious. I'm going to wait and see why. And that's what's really important. We've just seen that the, the times the, I've just read what you've read here. They said Man United are no, no longer considered too cool as the permanent replacement for Eric Ten Hag after a meeting between the two clubs uh, in Monaco on Tuesday. So it proves that Christine Falk, who broke this news, by the way, was right. It's understood that Tuchel left the meeting, as you say, with the sense that he would not be going, he's not going to be the Man United's uh, first choice should they dismiss Ten Hag and now elect to take a break. And that changes the complexity of that's a little bit like me saying, I want to let everybody know now I don't want to marry Beyonce. Do you know what I mean? Because she's probably not going to say yes. So it, again, if you're, if you're, if you're not a United fan, you're going to say that's BS. If you're a United fan, you're going to buy into it. And that's why I love football opinions. But, um, this year uh, from Mr. Hussein says it, it's so funny. It's like uh, he forgets what he says prior. Uh, so it's like he's talking about himself when he says Manchester United fans. No, I definitely said that. There's definitely been issues with Ten Hag. I, I, I won't change my mind about the criticism I've given Ten Hag. The fact it took him until the Arsenal game to change the system and the shape, which made us a much better team because we, ooh, we, we only narrowly got beat by Arsenal. And then we won our remaining three games and led to a trophy. And I can't help but think, if we'd have moved Amrabat, who he fought for all summer, That's so into great. his in, into his role so three or four crazy. months earlier, and made those changes to the system to be hard to play against, we could have made the top four. We would have had a much better end of the season, and I think there'd be many more people arguing to give him that final year. But as I said all along, go back and watch the the the, the, the videos. Although I thought he was going to have to go, my biggest reason for wanting him to go is we could all see this hole that wasn't created by injuries; it was created by shape, and he didn't address it. I also said, if you go back to the early videos, I was judging every game based on results, but I was judging the manager based on performances. And what kind of threw me is in the last three or four games, he made the changes I was begging for three or four months earlier. So listen, if he makes the changes and he addresses the holes and the problems, he's a good enough coach to get results and make us a better team. I've also said if Ten Hag leaves Man United, I expect him to have a very, very good career. What he isn't able to do, and I don't think there's very there's very few people in the world that can do it, is manage a football club the size of Man United. He is, like nearly every other person out there, a head coach, and that should be their job. So if he stays, I'll support it objectively in exactly the same way, my friend. Um, are you sure that it was United that didn't want to call? I mean, it's, the Times have reported that. So it, it, it all depends on who you are and who you get in the information. I, but the so I, I think we, I think we were down to listen. 
I think we were down to interview. Like that's a, that's what I think is completely fair across the board. People, I don't think United were saying absolutely no, we don't want Tuchel. I think it was an interview process the same way. If I apply for a job, they're like, hmm, we kind of like his CV. Let's see what he has to say. If I don't get the job, yeah. they were considering me. I just didn't go forward through the interview process. That's it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. And I think that Manny and I were interested in him. And I, I feel like what we have done is drawn up a short list. I think we probably had people contact us and we've sat down and said, this is what we want. This is how we want to play. This is the way the squad's going to be built. This is the way we're going to operate. Tell us how you're going to make that, make this relationship work. And maybe he walks out of that room just thinking, do you know what? It's, they're the complete opposite to me. And do you know what? If that's the case, I don't care whether he rejected us or we rejected him. I don't want a manager that's going to, it's going to be like water and oil. And that isn't a dig at two call. It's the problem that Man United have, have had this whole time. You know, you, you give Jose all the power in the world and you take it away from him, but still keep him in the job. You knew it was going to go crazy bad. You bring in managers like Ten Hag, you bring in a manager like Oli, go manage the whole of Man United from a footballing standpoint. Go on, without having any experience of running a club before. It was always going to go wrong. I like what we are doing.